Good morning. Uh, may I call on uh, our young academics to uh, get ready. We will start with the PhD students, and then we will uh, probably tone down to the master's one, not for any particular reason, but uh, just for order. So I will invite uh, Mrs. Haja L. Yusufi to come through and uh, kindly share your presentation with us. As she makes her way to the front, uh, I'm sure Mr. So Elamin, you could be getting ready too. Thank you. So thank you, Mr. Roberts. It's not working. Where is it? Okay. So, bonsoir tout le monde. Good afternoon, everyone. It's um, so great to see many familiar faces uh, and to meet new ones uh, here in beautiful Tunis. So, as the project manager of CRASTLF, the African Regional Center for Space Science and Technology in, space sci uh, technology in French language, uh, affiliated to the United Nations, a regional partner uh, of OSS, responsible for training of trainers. Uh, so I will be focusing more uh, on academia role for EO integration. So, the center has organized an important study on mapping and geo-analysis uh, of Earth observation uh, training courses available in North Africa. Our global uh, objective was to provide North African countries um, an estimated uh, descriptive profile uh, of the existing EO training system and an initial assessment of its relevance. Specifically, we aimed to uh, create a reference database that includes a broad range of EO, uh, address similarities and uh, complementarities in EO training in North African countries, initiates a systematic uh, core of tools uh, for the collection, structure, and design of geodata in uh, Earth observation training in North Africa. Okay. So, the methodology uh, of our study is structured into uh, four phases. Uh, the first one, uh, where we agree on the content and uh, characterization of the study. The second one, involving extensive uh, web research and electronic survey. The third one, where we analyze and present the results per country, providing um, a geo-analytical perspective. And finally, jobling in North Africa, where we synthesize and map out the strengths and opportunities of EO training in the region. Uh, this structured approach not only aids in understanding uh, the current landscape uh, of Earth observation training, but also assists in uh, strategically planning future enhancements in Earth observation, mapping and uh, training capabilities across uh, North Africa. By mapping and analyzing the existing training frameworks, we ad identify where academia and private sector can synergize uh, their efforts to elevate the quality and uh, applicability of earth observation, education, and trainer. So as a result, we have case studies from each North African country, but I will limit myself to presenting two case studies. The first one in Morocco, illustrating uh, how these training programs are not just 
theoretical but are applied in, uh, and impactful, providing crucial uh, skills and knowledge to professionals in the region. We concluded that 56 Earth observation training programs are offered uh, in Morocco, spread across 26 uh, tracks and 30 models uh, that cover nearly all administrative regions. Of these 20 tracks, our initial one is offered by uh, continuously at uh, the Royal, Royal Center for Space Remote Sensing, and five are available in both initial free and paid modes. So the second one in Egypt, we have uh, concluded that the offerings in Earth observation training are concerned, uh, concentrated in the northeastern uh, part of the country along the, the Nile. Primarily, these offerings are academic, uh, spanning 10 universities, including one private institution, the German uh, University, and additionally, the governmental um, centers, NARS and DRC, also provide training in Earth observation. So to speed things up, given the time, this overview map provides a comprehensive view um, that allows for uh, the observation of trends in each country based on four independent informative criteria. It enables the simultaneous uh, visual assessment of the sex training offerings in North Africa. So we recommend to update uh, the curricula of Earth observation uh, training uh, programs, the immediate integration of big technologies such as machine learning, big data, etc., into the training programs is so crucial, strengthen the mechanisms for the promotion and appropriation of the study among the consortium partners in the hope of improving, completing, harmonizing and appropriating it all uh, by all the actors in, interested in EO sector, cross the approach, uh, the geoanalytical methodology, the results and the del uh, deliverables of this regional desktop uh, study with the continent continental field study launched on the training uh, offer in EO in the GMS and Africa program. Now, let's dive into another thing. We also have conducted two case uh, studies on the application of geo, uh, geo services, MISVAR and MISLAND, under the framework of GMS and Africa, managed by CRASTLF and OSS. So these studies um, exemplify the application of advanced geospatial technologies in environmental monitoring and management within the context of North Africa highlighting uh, their significant role in sustainable land uh, and water resource management. So this integration of cutting edge technology underscores the crucial role of academia in uh, pioneering research that directly influences policy making and uh, governments, etc. And um, academic institutions like Krastelev are at the forefront of developing solutions that address critical uh, environmental challenges, thereby shaping a sustainable future. So, and to finish, since I'm a PhD student, I'm gonna share with you a little bit what's, um, what I'm working on. So my thesis topic is about the contribution of SAR, synthetic aperture radar, and the optical images to the extraction of natural resource information in Moroccan desert areas. So the objective of this work is to develop um, a methodology for the extraction of natural resource information from SAR satellite images and to evaluate um, the possibilities and limitations of these data. Concerning the methodology, we started with a literature review plus a data accusation, uh, the ESA Copernicus program uh, through the Sentinel-1 images uh, operating in the sea band and the Japanese satellites, Pulsar, operating in the L band provide um, a large um, images. 
So these data are available for exploitation. Then we started the data processing uh, and elaborating various methods uh, using new technologies such as machine learning, language uh, programs uh, such as Python, etc. Uh, and of course, to validate our results, we are planning uh, to, apply, uh, to do a field visit. We are currently finalizing the analysis of our results, so th this data is crucial to ensure that we share accurate and reliable information. Uh, we are committed to share uh, these results with you as soon as they become available. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much, Haji, for quite a detailed presentation. I'm sure you didn't give us all of it, but uh, I, I'm sure we'll still indulge more at the, when we have the panel discussion. Uh, as I call Mr. Elemin from University of Norchot, kindly come through. I had asked to be forgiven if I didn't pronounce anything correctly. And, uh, I have a small request. Uh, could we kindly lower our voices as uh, this young people present? They feel, I could hear voices louder than this from there. They feel they still need to grow, so let's give them some space. Thank you very much. The floor is yours. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, thank you, Mr. Robert. Uh, just allow me uh, to address a small message. Uh, to the Tunisia and the Tunisians in Arabic. بلاد عرفت في سحرها وطيبتها ليها بلاد تغنى الشعراء بسحر أراضيها هذه تونس الخضراء طاب الشعر فيها سلام من شنقيطة إلى بلاد سرت أراضيها. So. Uh, j'ai fait euh, partager avec vous euh, l'état d'avancement de ma thèse où j'utilise les données satellites et avec, combiné avec les outils géospatiels pour euh, l'estimation le, du potentiel d'hydrogène vert en Mauritanie. Donc le plan, euh, le plan est, est comme suit. Donc euh, comme vous le savez aujourd'hui, euh, le monde fait face à un certain nombre de défis. Donc dont les changements climatiques, euh, les dé la dégradation des terres, donc, euh, et les inondations et les déséquilibres écosystémiques donc, qui, ont, qui sont dits dans une grande partie par les émissions des gaz à effet de serre euh, qui sont majoritairement dits euh, aux énergies fossiles comme le pétrole, le gaz euh, et le charbon. Donc, euh, pour... Euh, pour une transition énergétique verte, donc le monde a besoin d'une alternative. Et l'hydrogène vert se pose comme un candidat. L'hydrogène est une molécule qui, qui ne se trouve quasi pas naturellement à l'état naturel. Euh, et pour l'extraire, il faut des procédés chimiques. Donc il est labellisé suivant le procédé chimique dont il a été produit. Si l'hydrogène est produit à partir des sources fossiles, comme le gaz, le charbon et le pétrole, sans capture et stockage du CO2, il est labellisé gris. Par contre, euh, avec capture et stockage du CO2, il est labellisé bleu, euh, tandis que l'hydrogène vert est l'hydrogène dont le procédé est carbone free. Donc, c'est l'électrolyse de la molécule d'eau à partir d'une source d'énergie renouvelable. Plusieurs travaux ont été faits donc, qui ont combiné des données géospatiales, des données satellites avec des outils géospatiales pour l'estimation du potentiel d'hydrogène vert euh, dans plusieurs régions comme le Canada, l'Algérie, le Maroc. Mais euh, il y avait toujours un gap. Aucune de ces études n'a proposé un modèle automatisé pour euh, estimer le potentiel d'hydrogène et qui peut être que l'on peut reproduire dans d'autres régions. Donc l'objectif de cette étude 
est tout d'abord d'estimer le potentiel d'hydrogène et d'énergie renouvelable en Mauritanie, ensuite proposer un modèle automatisé que l'on peut reproduire dans d'autres régions. Donc, le, la méthodologie qu'on va suivre tout d'abord, c'est d'estimer euh, le potentiel solaire et éolien, ensuite évaluer les sites potentiels adaptés à accueillir des projets d'énergie renouvelable pour enfin finir avec ce modèle automatisé qui estime le potentiel de production d'énergie, l'hydrogène vert et l'ammoniac, la quantité en tonnes de CO2 que l'on peut éviter en utilisant l'énergie renouvelable et les coûts de l'énergie et de l'hydrogène. Donc, les données qu'on qu a utilisées sont, proviennent de plusieurs sources, dont les données sentinelles, comme la couverture végétale euh, et l'utilisation de terre, le modèle numérique de terrain, qu'on a combiné avec d'autres données d'irradiation solaire et de vitesse de vent, euh, avec d'autres données de, 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 données de route et de, de, les données de route et des lignes électriques. Toutes ces données ont été combinées et on a utilisé l'analyse multicritère euh, pour euh, la suitabilité. Donc, les résultats obtenus, donc, on a fait tout d'abord, on a déjà réussi à, à faire une estimation théorique de l'hydrogène et des énergies renouvelables dans différentes régions de la Mauritanie. Et ces résultats ont été publiés dans un article dans un journal indexé Scopis, Geographica Technica. Et nous sommes actuellement euh, dans une deuxième phase de, de rédaction d'un deuxième article sur la suitabilité et pour arriver enfin au modèle euh, qui euh, va permettre d'automatiser et de le produire dans d'autres régions. Donc, euh, avant de finir, je remercie euh, le Centre universitaire de cartographie et de télédétection, l'Observatoire du Sahara et du Sahel et GMS d'Africa pour leur support euh, technique et le sport sponsoring. Je vous remercie pour votre attention. Thank you, El Amin, for a very passionate uh, presentation. Eh? You clearly love your staff and you understand what you're talking about. Uh, I think uh, that is commendable. Uh, next, we will uh, have a presentation from Mr. Abdul Rauf from uh, University of Tripoli. Welcome, sir. you had uh, enjoyed your your lunch <laughs> so let's dig into the point okay uh, the, wa the water scarcity and uh, illegal dr uh, drilling in the sector of uh, the water in Libya uh, leads to the, the damage in the ground, uh, groundwater and the soil. So uh, it's, this is required, uh, requiring the immediate, uh, immediate actions or immediate interfere to, uh, for sustainable water resource management. So uh, as you know, uh, as the Libyan know, uh, the 96% uh, from the water we use there uh, is from the uh, groundwater and 85% from it is going to the agriculture domain or agriculture sector. So according to the, uh, the, the reports uh, mentioned that there is uh, overestimation of uh, over, over consumption uh, due to the mismanagement uh, of the water resource there. Uh, so uh, depending on above mentioned, uh, crop water consumption is, is a very crucial factor and very important factor uh, maintaining a, a plant health and maximize yield as water uh, is essential for uh, photoscientists and nut nutrient transport and temperature regulation. Um, 
effect what uh, efficient water uh, ensured uh, sustainable agricultural practices and uh, conserve water resources uh, proper man management for a crop water need is vital for food security and environmental sustainability so we have uh, i think we have it's three problems but i think it's uh, related problems so uh, the majority uh, of water the first problem is primarily used in agriculture uh, and it's over consumed and inefficient way or uh, efficiently inefficiently man managed uh, second one we have to improve uh, original assessment methods uh, such as satellite based remote sensing uh, to, s to, to ensure the sustainable uh, water use and management. Uh, three, or uh, the third uh, problem um, we have to solve, a uh, standard ET crop or uh, estimation method like uh, conventional, by convention conventional way, like lysimeter and uh, fluxes measurements provide just just point data in the site so uh, uh, which which this unrepresentative of for larger areas so uh, we have to uh, use the satellite based remote sensing to overcome this est estimating uh, to estimate uh, regionally uh, et crop regionally field by field <coughs> So the main, the main objectives here is to map irrigated areas uh, using analysis uh, tools, which uh, concluded in the MISPAR platform, to uh, and using charts and graphics and sa s uh, statistics and time series variables on the study area. Uh, uh, develop a, a regression model between uh, savvy uh, derived from the satellite remote sensing or from the platform uh, with a case tablet KC which uh, which proposed fr uh, uh, from the FAO I think Ellen uh, uh, Beber 60 f 56 yeah and after that we will map a potato uh, crop coefficient KC and we will map a potato uh, ET crop or consumption need for the crop. <coughs> so uh, the methodology here. Yeah, we have three sections. Uh, the first w that data collection, which include uh, relevant uh, remote sensing uh, data, including uh, which we use uh, part of it. We use MESPAR platform and field data and weather data. After that, we will uh, statistical uh, calculation. We use cl uh, statistical calculation to, to calculate ET crop, uh, calculating reference evapotranspiration. And after that, we will uh, make a correlation or define the correlation between SAVI index and uh, tabled f uh, V tabled k uh, KC to build a regression model. And after that, we will map this uh, uh, this results. So this is the study area. Study area is located uh, uh, in East Tripoli. Uh, east of Tripoli is, is, is almost 90 kilometers uh, far from Tripoli. Uh, the main irrigation system there is the sprinkler irrigation and uh, drip irrigation. The most of them, uh, the most of the systems there is sprinkler irrigation. We have done uh, some uh, several uh, field visit uh, to to, uh, uh, to 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 record the venology of the the crop there uh, from the the planting date to the harvesting date. So uh, first uh, we. Uh, uh, calculate the evapotranspiration. If if we want to to calculate evapotranspiration or, or crop uh, consumption need uh, water need, we have um, 
in, in the field is very diffi difficult and operationally difficult to, to calculate this. So uh, Faud proposed this simple equation that, that it's uh, ET, ET0 is derived from or calculating by uh, data, uh, meteorological data, uh, multiplied by Kc, which, which represent the uh, crop coefficient, which depending on uh, depending on the, st w the the growth stage and at uh, tape of the the crop <coughs> after that we we calculate the uh, et0 which uh, which which uh, d uh, which uh, required a very huge um, a huge metro meteorological meteorological data so we we just we just uh, pick or choose uh, the simplest uh, equation to, to do this, which is uh, proved efficiently. Uh, ET0, uh, which requires just, just uh, temperature, minimum temperature and maximum temperature. And the result outcomes here. Uh, here, uh, the this is uh, the temperature in the study area, maximum and minimum temperature, and and rainfall. First, we uh, uh, we 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 map the 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 crop uh, in the study area, we crop mapping, and after that, we uh, secondly we map in the WI to 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 define where the the irrigation uh, taking place in the study area, utilizing MISPAR platform. Here we established the KC uh, relationship with SAVI. And after that, uh, we have two, two seasonal, uh, two seasonality parameters of the SAVI index depending on the potato uh, crop, which is here in the figure, figure six. Uh, the point which a circle, uh, the red circle A, is uh, represent um, uh, when the start green up, uh, green up started for the potato crop after after sowing day, and B uh, represent the peak of the uh, vegetation, the peak of the, the this vegetation uh, season, and the C represent the, uh, the harvesting day. So uh, the D is represent the duration of the growth stage, uh, growth uh, length. And this is from a green up to a harvesting day. <coughs> After that, we, we um, conduct uh, time series analysis uh, for each parcel uh, to de determine a growing uh, stages. We de 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 determine growing stages uh, depending on the time series from Ms. Bar and uh, the f field visit. So we correlate this and we define the, 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 the stage of the growth exactly from these both factors. Yeah, here. This is uh, the, the, this, this is, uh, yeah. We have time series analysis to uh, define the growth stage using MESPAR and uh, field visit. And here, parcel, parcel EA3 parcel is uh, example for, for uh, this is represent, first one represent uh, sewing day uh, throughout the developing stage, mid stage, and after that, to the harvesting day. So here, uh, figure nine uh, represented the, the relation uh, of crop coefficient from V with uh, the KC, and we come up with uh, R square. Uh, I think it's it's good. It's good uh, correlation. R square uh, point seven point uh, point seven eight. Here. 
After that, we applied this equation, here, this equation here. Yeah, this equation, we applied this equation to, to map uh, KC, uh, predicted KC uh, and, and uh, ET crop or uh, what, uh, crop water consumption map. And here we compared between uh, ET0 and ET crop uh, to, the, uh, to the growth season. So ha uh, as we see here, uh, the column here, the, the uh, yellow column is uh, represent uh, uh, the farm where, where, where could farm uh, conserve water. So here, uh, um, the actual ETC for the crop remains constant uh, from uh, from 20 December to uh, to, uh, to uh, 2021 to uh, almost one month, constant to two millimeter a day. After that, it's gradually increased to the 4.4 uh, millimeter a day. So here, uh, the yellow column, it's the it's opportunity for the farm to, to conserve water. And here, the same uh, situation in another parcel. After that, we applied uh, the equation to, to map the whole study area. Here, uh, the figure 11, this is KC, predicted KC map. And here is uh, estimation of, uh, this is uh, the map of uh, ET crop, which is represent evolved uh, transpiration for the crop, uh, and it's a crop water consumption map. And here uh, we see the, the, the pattern between the, uh, the factors here, FAU, FAU uh, KC and SAVI, and the KC which we bro uh, produced. And it's, it's uh, enhanced, very good enhanced here. So, okay, conclusion. As satellite remote sensing data and geographic information system, uh, technique were employed to estimate uh, the crop coefficient of potato. The study involved to obtain uh, a multispectral uh, savvy using MESPAR platform and inves investigating the correlation between KC and SAVI. Uh, the relation between KC and SAVI was uh, R square was 0 0.78. Uh, this finding indicate that SAVI can serve as proxy, as a suitable proxy for estimation potato crop coefficient by utilizing this model. And thank you. And, and there, there, there is future work. We, we have not done this work, but it's okay. And thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Hamdi, uh, I think he started slow, but uh, I want to encourage you. you. You surely, you remind me of those very intelligent students in class. They don't want to talk too much. <laughs> there are more people who want to put their minds on paper. But with a short, in a short while, you'll be right here and you'll be doing things. So thank you very much, and uh, uh, we appreciate your presentation. Next, we're going to call on uh, Mr. Fadi Oslati, if you're here to come and share with us uh, your bit. Thank you. So hello, everyone. It's with great pleasure I present to you today my master thesis titled the uh, investigating uh, novel loss function of deep learning for satellite image time series forecasting, supervised by Mr. Ali Ben Abbas. Uh, my name is Fidi Usleti. Uh, before starting, I would express my sincere gratitude to uh, OSS and um, to present in GMS and Africa uh, workshop. 
to begin, uh, uh, we, will, uh, we will introduce study term, then uh, address the problem of traditional loss functions. Um, with, uh, next, we will explore the main and specific objectives, work methodology, followed by discussion about expected results. And finally, we have a prospect. Okay, look, the time series forecasting is uh, a technique that studies uh, historical data to forecast uh, the future trends. Uh, this approach is very uh, essential to across applications like uh, agriculture analysis, uh, weather prediction, uh, environmental, environmental uh, motor monitoring, and more. Uh, our research focuses on designing and evaluating uh, a new loss function to enhance the performance, uh, the performance of time series forecasting. So in deep learning loss function uh, plays a critical role in um, model optimization and uh, uh, improve accuracy so uh, they measure the difference uh, between the predicted and actual values uh, without considering unique characteristics of time series. These characteristics include the shape, timing, outliers, extreme events, distortions, and shifts. So our main objective is to develop a new loss function to improve the accuracy of environmental time series forecasting models. Uh, specific objectives are analyze the limitations of current uh, loss function in environmental context, uh, design a new loss function suitable for time series forecasting, and evaluate the performance of new loss functions on real satellite data set. So uh, for the data, we're going to use uh, satellite, uh, satellite da data. For the data processing, we're going to do cleaning techniques like removing an anomalies, uh, handling missing values, and normal normalization techniques like scaling data to make them comparable. Uh, for the forecast models, we're going to employ like models like RNN, uh, LSTM, and others. So uh, for the assessments, uh, the evaluation of a novel loss function is uh, to, uh, we're going to compare it with the traditional loss functions like MSC and MAE. So for the expected results, validation of a new loss function uh, on different satellite Landsat data sets, uh, reduced forecast errors compared to traditional loss functions, improved the forecast accuracy, and uh, finally, better capture of anomalies and seasonal trends. Uh, looking ahead, we plan to integrate the novel loss functions uh, for time series forecasting in the MISLAND and MISBAR platforms using various machine learning and deep learning algorithms, algorithms like uh, linear and nonlinear regressions, decision trees, uh, random forest, SVM, ARIMA models, uh, artificial neural network, RNN, LSTM, uh, and, uh, and others. So our timing includes a state of our synthesis, uh, test, data set download and pre-processing, validations, and writing conference. And thank you for your attention. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Osulati, for a wonderful presentation. Uh, next, Mr. Anas Ayed, is he in? Please come through. And I'm seeing we are picking up uh, courage and uh, the story is getting sweeter. So, Mr. Anas, we expect to see. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Today we'll be pre presenting our, our work on, uh, on 
on integ uh, integrating the uh, multi body tank series forecasting service into uh, the Midland uh, platform for the drought forecasting. This project is, uh, is part of the GMS and uh, Africa initiative, focusing on the earth ob observation for sustainable development in uh, North Africa. First, I want to thank uh, the Observatory of uh, Sahara uh, and uh, Sahel for giving me the opportunity to be here today. I also want to express my, my gratitude to Izam and Riyadi for their support throughout the, this journey. And a special thanks to my supervisor, Dr. Uh, Ali Ben Abdes, for his in, uh, invaluable guidance. Our present, uh, presentation will, co will cover the following uh, points. First, the study theme, then pro uh, problem statement, then ma main and specific objectives, wor work and uh, met methodology, expected results, and finally, prospects. Dr drought forecasting is a co complex and uh, challenging ta task, yet addressing uh, drought is an urgent necessity. The use of multivariate uh, time series forecasting allows us to predict complex trends in drought uh, in indices by leveraging spatial and temporal uh, data relationships. Our goal is to integrate an, a robust multivariate time series forecasting ser service into the uh, Midland uh, pl uh, platform, enhancing enhance, enhance our ability to monitor and uh, respond to drought uh, conditions. We have reviewed several state-of-the-art studies to inform our approach. These uh, include advanced meta methodologies in, in encoder-decoder frameworks, convolutional neural networks, deep learning mo models, and transfer learning te techniques. These studies provide valuable insight and met methodologies that we will, uh, will adapt for our forecasting service. Capturing uh, complex uh, relationships Capturing complex relationships between uh, m multiple uh, spatial temporal uh, dependent uh, variables is a significant ch challenge, Especia especially uh, given the high dim dimensionality and the evolving patterns of the data. Key challenges include data dynamicity and ca capturing spatial and temporal dependencies. Our main objective is to create a robust multivariate time series forecasting module to, uh, capable of uh, handling dynamic uh, data and complex uh, dependencies. Specifically, we aim to develop and integrate this forecasting module as a web service within the Midland uh, platform. Drought data is the dynamic, constantly, uh, constantly ch changing and spatial temporal dependent, varying ac across locations and over time. It is also a multivariate ti time series including uh, multiple fa factors such as rainfall, the temperature, and soil uh, moisture. Similar to applications in traffic and uh, financial uh, forecasting, drought forecasting can, uh, can benefit from using graph neural uh, networks. GNNs le leverage the spatial de dependencies and temporal correlations present in the data, providing a robust framework for pre uh, predicting drought conditions with improved uh, accuracy. This approach allows, allows us to capture the variation across multiple locations and uh, over time more effectively. Our ap uh, approach consists of three main steps. First, the uh, data integration. We'll, com we'll be combining uh, satellite uh, images, such as la la Landsat, climactic da data, and soil mo moisture da da data using Google Earth uh, Engine. Then we will we will be developing a deep learning multivariate time series for forecasting model for, for drought. Then finally, we will, we will be tra training validating the, mo the model to ensure accurate drought predictions. We, ans we, an we anticipate the following outcomes. One, a fully trained mo model, a robust and uh, an accurate machine lear deep learning mo model tailored for drought forecasting. Two, uh, spe spatial temporal uh, ma mapping, detailed maps showing the spatial and temporal distribution for drought, uh, drought conditions.
Looking ahead, we plan to, one, synthesize the state-of-the-art methodologies, two, implement and test our uh, proposed methodology, three, download and pre-process the data sets, four, validate uh, our, our model, five, present our uh, findings at, at confer conference, uh, conference, at the conference. In conclusion, integrating a multivariate time series forecasting servers into the MISLAND uh, platform represents a significant step forward in our ability to monitor and predict drought uh, conditions in uh, North Africa. This initiative will help bridge the gap between science, technology, and, po and policy, ultimately contributing to the sustainable de development. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Anas Ayed, for your uh, presentation. Uh, clearly, I want to believe that uh, all those master's students in the next, uh, this actually is probably your pre, look at it as uh, your defense. So you already have done your pre-defense, and I hope when you go before the panel, it should be a walkover. Okay, lastly, we're going to have uh, Mrs. Omaima to come and share with us her presentation, if she's here. Athena. Oh, and I had said, uh, oh, please forgive me if I mispronounce these names a bit. Uh, please take the... Uh, so, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Buthaina Warheni, and I'm currently doing my uh, master degree uh, in uh, data science and information retrieval. Uh, I want to thank uh, uh, the OSS for giving me the opportunity to be here today. Uh, also, uh, uh, I want to express my gratitude to Izam and Riedi for uh, their support throughout this journey. Um, a special thanks to my supervisor, uh, Dr. Ali bin Abbas, uh, for this uh, invaluable gu guidance. Today, I'm excited to uh, present our uh, research on multimodal time series, um, remote sensing data for uh, land uh, degradation monitoring. So uh, this is the plan where uh, we are going to talk about uh, each uh, section uh, later. So uh, I will start by study uh, team, uh, problem statement, uh, main and uh, specific objectives, work uh, methodology, expect uh, results, and uh, prospects. Uh, now, uh, uh, now I will start by uh, study team. So uh, here in Africa, we face uh, significant challenges uh, related to land degradation and climate change. Uh, currently, uh, around 46% uh, of Africans' uh, land area is degraded, affected uh, by 65% uh, uh, of its population, which uh, amount, uh, amounts to uh, is a, um, is amount to um, 485 million people. Uh, the economic cost of the land degradation in uh, Africa is around $9.3 billion annually. Uh, furthermore, uh, between uh, 55 uh, and 80% of uh, cultivated land is degraded, uh, losing uh, th between uh, 30, uh, thir 30 and uh, 60 kilograms of uh, nutrients uh, per, per uh, hectare per year per year is uh, this uh, trans continual over health of Africa cultivated land could become in, uh, unusable by 2050 uh, uh, exacerbating food insecurity so uh, this is some uh, references uh, that talk about uh, some st static uh, thing uh, about la land degradation so here, uh, the study uh, team, or uh, let's say the context of our research is 
to pr uh, they propose their research aims to enhance predictive analytics to support uh, the SDGs, uh, especially when we talk about uh, uh, SDGs uh, 15, using innovative uh, techniques. Uh, so by uh, incorporating uh, deep learning, multimodal, uh, uh, multimodal learning, and uh, time series analysis, uh, it seeks to develop advanced multimodal uh, machine, uh, multimodal time series uh, models. So uh, these models are intended to boost uh, prediction accuracy in key area, which uh, with a special focus on tackling climate science. Uh, issues such as land degradation to, integ uh, to integrate it to uh, Miss Land uh, platform. So uh, in this table, uh, I provide uh, a summary of recent research on desertifica desertification and land uh, degradation, uh, highlighting methodology, case studies, and innovative, uh, uh, innovative approach using uh, remote sensing, GIS, and deep learning techniques. Uh, across various uh, region, regions, including Tunisia, e Egypt, India, Romania, and uh, Jordan. So, uh, uh, passing to uh, problematic uh, statement. So here, uh, like I mentioned before, uh, our study is based on uh, using multimodal machine learning. So uh, here, our main problematic is in a unimodal time series analysis. So when uh, we deal with the sensors of different spatial resolution, uh, information loss occurs during uh, pre-processing, uh, such as uh, steps, uh, such as uh, upscaling, downscaling, etc. Uh, so this loss of information can potentially uh, impact the performance and robustness of uh, the model, of our model, of uh, all the models. Sorry. So uh, our main uh, and specific objectives, so uh, develop a multimodal time series forecasting system for land degradation. Uh, our data is collected from uh, uh, Sentinel-1, Sentinel-2, Landsat, and climate data satellite. Uh, images for land degradation detection. Evaluate the system accuracy and effectiveness in uh, detecting land, uh, land uh, degradation uh, patterns using ground truth and uh, data and expert knowledge. Uh, here also uh, we have another main uh, objective. Apply the system to a real world case in Africa to detect uh, and monitor land uh, degradation. So here, by applying uh, the developed system uh, to a case study in Africa uh, to detect and monitor land de degradation, analyze the results to identify area of, of severe land degradation and understand the underlying causes, uh, provide recommendation for effective strategies to mitigate uh, land degradation in, uh, uh, in the study area. So uh, here, um, the work methodology. So here, we start by, by collecting the data, uh, obtain relevant remote sensing data resources. It is uh, from, uh, like we mentioned before, from uh, Sentinel-1, Sentinel-2, et cetera. Uh, the, second uh, the second step is uh, data processing multimodal. Uh, that uh, we here we clean and standard, uh, standardize uh, data from uh, consistency. And here we are going uh, th for the third, uh, the third um, uh, step is to le learning. Uh, it mean uh, I'm going to train our model, uh, and uh, to the next uh, step uh, we uh, make our evaluation, uh, assess model uh, performance using uh, some metrics, and finally implement modes for real-time uh, predictions. Our expect results. Uh, the innovative approach is uh, ex exact, uh, expected to improve the detection of land degradation, enhancing accuracy and uh, efficiency. Uh, precise uh, identification of the uh, degraded area enable targeted conversation effort and informed decision making. Uh, and finally, this leads to more effective management of natural resources and mitigate the impact of land uh, degradation. And uh, here, uh, our prospects. So, uh, 
So here, uh, our uh, research uh, aims to integrate multimodal time series uh, technology into the Missland uh, platform for, for land degradation forecasting. Uh, this approach can potentially be adapted for forecast uh, our other uh, environmental disaster, uh, broadening the scope and impact our uh, our work. So uh, this is uh, the schedule. We are, uh, will uh, start with by uh, state of the art sentences. Uh, second, proposed methodology. Uh, third, testing, data download and processing, validation, and finally, conference uh, writing. And thank you for your attention. attention. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Omani Omami. Well, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going to get that right. Anyway, so thank you very much for your presentation. And uh, well, I was just going to ask one quick one, one quick one before you step things up, because if you looked at the program, we kind of started from the end than from the beginning. And that was because we had a, a little situation that's been sorted now. Uh, my appeal rather was I was going to ask because I know the room is full of uh, some heavyweight uh, academics they are uh, very celebrated academics in the room uh, from the presentations we got from the PhD and the master's students maybe we'll keep it to after this what would you what 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 of advice would you have for them what would you how would they enhance what they are doing and uh, maybe we'll deal with that at the end of uh, the session so just something that you can think about so that you can give them a little something to feed on as they continue. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think at this point in time, we'll probably step it up now. And uh, we want to welcome our keynote uh, presentation. It will be by one Professor Gayane Faye, who is the head of GMS Africa Academia. He will join us online. So ladies and gentlemen, if uh, we can get him connected. Hello? Hello? We hear you. Hello, sir. We hear you loud and clear. You may okay, thank you so you much. Proceed, <laughs> uh, I don't know if uh, the presentation is ready because I send it to events uh, before it's ready i would like to to thank oss um, uh, to invite me and give me this opportunity to share with uh, uh, with you uh, some uh, slide on the james and africa academia network uh, i don't know if it is okay ready uh, GMSN Africa Academia Network is a network uh, put in place by GMSN Africa um, to bring uh, uh, research, lecture, and uh, some who are working on act, act in academic sector uh, to work together and uh, to contribute to the GMSN Africa implementation. Um, <clears throat> I don't know uh, if uh, the presentation is ready or not yet. It will be ready in a short while, sir. You could probably share a little more. Or, or if you want, I share uh, my screen. No more. No, just a minute, sir. Uh, maybe you want to shed a little more light on uh, the organization. Another two, three minutes. Okay, All right. no, no problem. Apparently, kindly share your own screen because we seem to have a situation. Yes, let me, let me try to share my... Oh, thank you, sir. Yeah, I think it is this one. Um, sorry, 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 sorry. Is it okay? 
Yes, it's okay, yes, sir. It's okay. It's okay. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, I, I, uh, I said, uh, GMS in Africa Academia Network is a network uh, uh, for African uh, teacher researcher who are working on uh, Earth observation in uh, different fields of application. Uh, our main objective is to to join our force, to join our our capacity to to contribute in the GMS and Active uh, Africa uh, uh, projects. And uh, 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 the main objective of uh, this uh, uh, this network is uh, uh, firstly to training and capacity building. Because uh, 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 as you know, if you want to have to exploit uh, all the potential of uh, Earth observation of space uh, uh, technology, we need to have uh, more and more uh, uh, young trained and more and more capacity building. And so our our first objective is to train and to help to to help students and also uh, teacher and training who are working in this field. Uh, to strengthen the capacity in uh, uh, earth observation, uh, data exploitation, and uh, product services. Uh, for this, uh, uh, we are doing uh, some uh, training session, uh, some scientific animation uh, about some uh, some different point or some different thematic uh, using earth observation, and also we are doing some uh, hackathon. Uh, the second main objective is to facilitate collaboration between African researchers, uh, uh, because uh, many of African uh, researchers working on Earth observation in the same field, but they don't. Uh, each of uh, us uh, is working in his own uh, uh, sector or it has part. So uh, this network will help some uh, uh, African uh, researcher to know uh, how. The other guy are doing in this region and to share uh, the experience and also to share the result. Uh, it is very important because we have some uh, the same problems in the different region. We have uh, the same need, so we need to uh, to collaborate. We need to to work together uh, to uh, uh, resolve some uh, many problems that we have in uh, in, in our countries. Uh, so in uh, we started working on, uh, at the end of uh, uh, 2021, and uh, in 2022 uh, we had uh, four training sessions and one hackathon. Uh, the four training was on uh, uh, surface water resources, wetland vulnerability, agriculture monitoring, and uh, why is the uh, I'm sorry. Uh, agriculture monitoring, and also we had some uh, uh, an hackathon in, uh, in in at the end of uh, uh, 2022 at uh, Tijali on uh, using Earth observation for uh, 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 natural resources monitoring. In uh, 2023, we had uh, uh, also two training sessions, one hackathon and three scientific animation. Uh, the first training uh, was on uh, marine and coastal resources uh, that uh, done by uh, University of Ghana in uh, Angola. And the second one was on coastal monitoring. And uh, we had also uh, three uh, 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 scientific animation with uh, uh, Digital Earth Africa uh, to share uh, the different uh, platforms and the different uh, results in the different algorithms. Uh, that developed by Digital Earth Africa in the different fields like uh, uh, coastal monitoring, like water monitoring, uh, something like that, uh, to share uh, this different opportunity with African researchers, with students, and with uh, some who are working on this. And also, we had uh, uh, um, scientific animation on the TLP, 
the DLP is developed by GMSN Africa to share some courses, to share some uh, algorithm, or to share some knowledge. And uh, the last was in with GPO, and uh, also we shared with a student, with a, a professor, uh, the different opportunity of a uh, GPO. And uh, now in two, 2024, uh, we had uh, we programmed some uh, one uh, one uh, training session in Tunis during this or uh, this uh, uh, this meeting. But unfortunately, uh, uh, with some problem, we cancelled it. But we are planning to have some hackathon uh, at the end of this year. Uh, this is some uh, some uh, summarize of uh, the different activity that we are doing in uh, in uh, this uh, network. It is some uh, some picture uh, during the different session we had uh, in these two years. This one was in uh, in Congo, if I. I remember in, uh, uh, in Uganda, uh, this one I don't know, uh, in Tunis, it was Tunisia, in Kigali, it was a uh, hackathon in, in Kigali with Digital Earth Africa, uh, no, with EO Africa, and it was a very, very successful uh, uh, hackathon. And also, this was in, uh, in Angola. Uh, on uh, marine and coastal resources monitoring with the University of Ghana, uh, Professor Kwame. And uh, also an hackathon in uh, Seychelles uh, on uh, coastal monitoring also. And uh, some scientific animation, one uh, with uh, Digital Earth Africa, one uh, with uh, GPO, and one uh, on the uh, DLP. Uh, now we have uh, uh, on the the, the uh, network, more than uh, 150 members from 20, more than 25 countries in Africa, and all the five region is uh, uh, is concerned by uh, our our network. We continue uh, trying to to bring all uh, more and more uh, African researchers, more and more African lecture. Are working in this, in this field to join us and to 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 help us to have a, a very a very big uh, uh, network and continue to contribute in GMS in Africa in in all the all all initiative or program or project uh, in in Africa. Uh, this is that why I would like to to share with you and uh, I thank. Uh, uh, OSS to invite me and to give me this opportunity to share with you uh, some uh, uh, information about uh, GMS in Africa Academy Network. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Prof, for a very detailed insight into your organization. Uh, we appreciate the work you're doing and we sincerely hope uh, it's going to uh, spread through all the corners and uh, uh, give more capacity. Thank you very much, and uh, we hope to hear from you again. Thank you so much. Uh, well, I think at this point in time, uh, maybe it's the right time to call uh, for a panel discussion with our very decorated academia I spoke about. And while uh, they will be here, uh, again, we are going to ask, we'll open it to the floor after we get their uh, submissions. And uh, whoever has anything to add will get a roving mic and we can all put things together. So I will, uh, as they come up, then we will uh, b give a bit of context uh, to the discussion. But uh, to start up, I will call them. And again, if I mispronounce your names kindly, do not take offense. I will try. Uh, I will start by, in no particular order, uh, Dr. Issam Nuiri, if you're in, please come through. No, okay, Dr. Bashir Nuer, I think I got that right. Mrs. Haja Yusufi. Haja, Haja. Okay, the R and the U, okay, a bit of, okay, I will learn that. Uh, Mrs. Esra Ibrahim, if you're in. Mr. 
El Hamadi Abdul Rauf, if you're in. Mrs. Butaina Ohani. I got that right now, I know. Yeah, please come to the front and uh, as we throw in a bit of context into uh, what we intend to discuss. Now, literally, uh, literally and as rightfully uh, uh, themed, this particular session uh, needed to discuss the role of academia and private sector into valorization of art observation-based services, products, and just make it out there and uh, increase its uptake. If that happened, maybe we would have uh, better results, uh, particularly in the achievement of our SDG goals, which are, I think we are really far from uh, achieving. And maybe with the art, uh, art or observation products, we may have uh, better insight into what is really happening in the world in terms of, uh, particularly with climate change, because there's so much happening, but we don't have precise details, we don't have the right data, uh, all the models that I have uh, heard about or uh, uh, interacted with in any way uh, are not achieving, they are not giving us the true pictures. So again, there is uh, a bit that academia would want to tune us on there. So I think uh, at this point in time, uh, we are going to have five questions and these five questions in no particular order, though they are preferences to some questions, and I will rightfully start by, uh, uh, I, I will read the questions out, and uh, as I do that, then uh, I'll give the, the panelists a little time to think about it, probably a minute or so, and uh, just uh, absorb the question, and then we can start. Uh, I know there was someone who was willing to join the panel, Elmin. Please come, come up, come up and we could all share from, as he walks up, let me. So uh, I think uh, quickly, quickly, so that we don't keep uh, our audience uh, waiting too long. The idea is uh, originally the context is most of the data we are using is outdated data. We no longer have uh, what is uh, traditional data has become one way to, it is not cost effective. But again, there is the need that we should have uh, a little collaboration to develop and build synergies between the private sector, academia, and the users. So uh, our discussions are going to revolve around those particular three bits. And uh, the first question, I'll just read the, uh, them loud, and then we will uh, engage uh, our panelists. Uh, the first question would be, what assessments, important or weak, do you make of the involvement and contribution of the academic sector in the production and sharing of scientific knowledge based on art observation products? The second one, how does the academic sector contribute to raising awareness among decision makers of the extent of land degradation and its socioeconomic and environmental impacts. The other one would be, which role, I like the word, it's written must, which role must the academic sector play in exploiting art observation to support the production of special indicators for monitoring and analyzing land degradation in African countries and regions? And the fourth one, I think we'll keep it to four, consolidate the discussion around that. How can the academic sector strengthen networking and collaboration with universities and research centers to consolidate achievements 
and develop innovative approaches to improve the monitoring and rehabilitation of degraded land. Degraded land to reach food security, to ensure optimized irrigation and sustainable use of groundwater resources. Uh, sorry, I overlooked something. Uh, Prof is also a panelist, he's still online, and uh, sir, where you feel uh, you need to make a contribution, I'll particularly want you to, if you please, look at uh, the fourth question uh, in detail. How can the academic sector strengthen networking and collaboration with universities and research centers to consolidate achievements and develop innovative approaches to improve the monitoring and rehabilitation of degraded land, to reach food security, to ensure optimized irrigation, and sus sustainable use of groundwater resources. In no particular order, but uh, just so that uh, we have a fair discussion, I think I'll go by that little theory. I'll give the ladies a head start and uh, I want to ask, uh, I don't know who is, who is ready to start. Oh, okay, then I will make my choice. I, I will make my choice. And uh, I'm going to uh, I'd, uh, I would ask uh, Dr. Bashir to kindly take a question that uh, indulges you and you can engage us, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, engagement of the stage. I would like to, to thank you because I would like the way you managed uh, to untraditional and to, uh, to make things go smoothly. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to ask uh, to thank uh, the participant the, uh, the students for their excellent uh, presentations. And they've done very good work. And this is a great example of the uh, academic role in terms of supporting the development in, in general and uh, the promotion of the EO in agriculture. Before I start to talk about uh, the role of the, the academic uh, sector in, 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 in a specific way, I would like to first set the scene to see the, uh, the state of this sector. Academia, if we are if we're talking about the existing condition of the academia, it has, uh, uh, historically speaking, it has a role of producing knowledge, science, research, and producing innovative uh, idea where can be applied to create a better life and sustainable development and techniques to reduce poverty, to, to provide uh, food security and water security. But at this time, I would like just to put a background where the academia uh, the world in general, and the academia in particular, have a great challenge to be in the forefront of leading these uh, uh, efforts to, to secure the sustainability for especially the third world and developing countries. At the moment, we have what we call an Avalon or a high education revolution. Uh, I would just direct your attention to a book which has been uh, published in 2013 by Lord uh, Barbara, who forecasted that the academic uh, uh, sector will have a revolution. It's called an Avalon is coming. A, 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 a revolution in high education is coming. And this revolution 
will have three, three main, three main uh, challenges or aspects. Firstly, the higher education, uh, is, there is a decline, there will be decline in traditional education, the face-to-face -face education. Secondly, there will be a rapid growth of fully online university courses. Uh, those uh, development, he stated that it need be deep, radical, radical and urgent transformation, transformation of higher education which urgently required. That was 10 years ago. COVID come to the scene and made this rabbit fast coming. So now we, we will have, the academia will in the future will develop in a way which could uh, have a challenges for the academia, but in the same time, this can be a strength or improvement in terms of uh, organization working in development. What to say is the academia can play a better role, an effective role, improved role in providing online uh, uh, courses, techniques, and so forth. So in the future, and it's the near future, we see it coming now, there's going to be uh, courses, you can get a degree from Tunis, from university in, in, in US. So what I'm, I'm trying to, to get across is the academia used to be the, uh, the, the, in the forefront, leading those uh, development in terms of technology, innovation, ideas, software, platforms, and so forth. And, and is it is going to be the case, but the, the role is changing. The, the tools are changing. And I, I think it's, it's a very, or it's a, great, uh, it's a great opportunity for the development for nations, for the world, and for international and regional and national organization and NGOs to get benefit from this advance where we go to more cutting edge technology where we apply the science not for the sake of science but for the application and producing solution producing tools and affecting the lives of millions and millions of people the the role of academia goes to first put priorities the science now and it's it's the time where academia look at the pressing issues. We know in academic, or, uh, in academic environment, there are many uh, uh, academic and scientific innovation and so on, but now I think the focus should be on the cutting edge technology to produce solution for, uh, to improve life of millions, a solution for land degradation reduction uh, poverty reduction and so forth. And with this platform and uh, EO technology and data, I think it's in, in the future is going to come together, but it needs to understand all parties, uh, private sector, academic sector, national uh, organization, regional organization, that change should be the, the opportunity to go forward and work together, where we understand the trends and the consequences of this or such development. So I would, I would uh, just conclude that the academia will be, it was and it will be and is the leading role in technology. But the responsibility for all parties including the private sector, is to get all act together so that we seize the opportunity of improving technology in terms of uh, uh, technology applications and in the same time, communication of the technology which will inevitably will uh, ease the transformation of the lives of millions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir, for your very aptly put uh, <laughs> uh, submission. I, I don't think uh, 
there's need to add anything uh, on top of that. Uh, so in the meanwhile, I am going to call on Professor Fire. If you're online, sir, please uh, share with us your contribution to any of those questions, but particularly number four. Well, uh, maybe, maybe we have a situation that it's fine. I, um, I think we'll move on, and uh, when and if he comes online, we will give him an opportunity. All right, next, let, me, let us uh, hear something from uh, Mrs. Ohani. I, I've been practicing that name. I need to try it. So Mrs. Ohani, kindly take the stage and indulge us in, uh, I think you were answering question number two? Number four. Please, take to the floor and share your submission. So, uh, how academic uh, sector can co collaborate with the university and the research centers uh, to improve monitoring and uh, uh, rehabilitation for degradation la uh, land, uh, ensure food security, optimize irrigation uh, and the sustainability use uh, ground uh, wa water uh, resources uh, by uh, working together. Uh, so uh, academic uh, institute uh, should uh, team up with uh, uh, university research, uh, research centers and other groups that care about uh, the, uh, env uh, env the environment. This can help everyone share ideas and uh, resources uh, second, sharing what we know. Uh, we need to show information uh, and uh, data uh, about the Earth uh, gathered from uh, satellites, uh, satellites and other uh, resources. Uh, this helps us all uh, understand what's happening in the, 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 in the land and uh, water b better. Uh, third, learning uh, skills. Uh, academ ac academic uh, can uh, teach uh, people uh, have, uh, to use, how to uh, use uh, the data effectively through uh, workshops and training programs. This help uh, local experts uh, uh, learn to solve problems like land degradation and water uh, management. Uh, creating new ideas. By uh, working together, researchers uh, can uh, come up with uh, new, uh, new ways to use the data to solve problems. They can even start uh, businesses to sell these ideas. Uh, inf influencing laws and uh, rules. This means uh, uh, we, uh, um, uh, we can add uh, rules and uh, laws. So academic uh, uh, talks uh, to uh, government leaders making rules that uh, help protect our land and water. As example, they can also show how using this data can make, um, make uh, how can make uh, using land and water in a better way. So uh, finally, financial uh, support by working together. Uh, researchers can uh, apply uh, a grant and uh, funding. Uh, th uh, this money can help them to, more, uh, to, m to make more uh, research uh, and uh, find more uh, solution to uh, problems. And uh, that's it. Thank you very much, Ohani. Uh, we appreciate uh, your progress. You have uh, done quite well. Uh, I was a bit shocked uh, in the beginning when I told you, okay, you'll be a panelist, but anyway, that's for another day. You've done very well. Let's keep it up. Professor Gayan, I hear you're online. Could you kindly yes, I'm here. please share with us your thoughts on any of those uh, bits? Any, uh, any submissions you have for any of our questions, sir? The floor is yours. Okay, th thank you so much. As I said during my presentation, uh, we have uh, many African researchers who are working on land degradation in different parts of Africa. And uh, 
we have we working on the the same problems uh, with different methodology and each other is working in its side so the academic network will uh, help to bring all this effort all this this lecture all this research, people who are working in this field to work together and to identify some different problem uh in the different regions of africa and working in uh, on network uh, for me it is very important to work together because the, our problem is the same we use all uh, earth observation we use the same uh, methodology sometimes so we need to join our 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 our, our, our energy uh, to resolve to try to resolve this problem uh last year uh we worked in morocco uh, uh, to, to to discuss and uh, to think about land degradation uh, with different uh, uh, person and uh, if you uh, when i saw the different presentation on uh, the different work in uh, around africa i, I was thinking that it is very important to join our our energy and uh, to try to 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 resolve this problem. So the network is very important. Networking is very important. Working together is very important because uh, our problem uh, is uh, uh, is the same and we are using the same methodology, the same uh, uh, data, but we need to share each other to share what kind of methodology you are using, what kind of problem you, you have, what kind of need you have, and if you, you share different, we'll, uh, uh, we'll see uh, the synergy and we'll uh, uh, together see some solution for our problems. And also the network will help to, 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 to train, to, uh, uh, to help students, and uh, also to uh, to train a lot of uh, uh, many students and uh, to have uh, some uh, human resources in uh, in this different field and uh, that will help to to, to resolve this, the different problems that we have on land degradation problems thank you very much professor we appreciate your thoughts and uh, i concur that uh, we are all working on the same thing and everyone is working in their own silo and therefore if we collaborated maybe we'd make faster progress yeah if you want to go far you don't walk alone but if you want to go quick you can go alone all right so thank you very much professor we appreciate your thoughts and uh, i think it's also something you could further uh, as one of your uh, main uh, advocacy lines, being uh, the head of an, uh, an important institution like that, it should be part of your message uh, in uh, all your advocacy it should be the need for integration, synergies, so that then we are not replicating, we are not reinventing the wheel. Thank you very much, Professor. Uh, I will now give the floor to Esra Ibrahim, Mrs. Ezra Ibrahim, please share with us your thoughts on, uh, I think that is question two. Please do. Yes, uh, question number two. Uh, how does the academic uh, sector contribute to raising awareness among the de uh, decision makers of uh, the extent of land degradation and its socioeconomic and environmental impacts? Uh, I will uh, answer this question uh, from the perspective of academic sector and also uh, an environmental decision maker. Okay. The academic sector uh, now is depending on remote sensing and uh, monitoring and uh, the environmental problems. Um, one of them is land degradation and soil erosion. The decision makers uh, also have a growing interest with the, the applications of remote sensing on different aspects because it can easily show them the temporal and spatial changes. Okay, um, uh, in different uh, fields like the uh, the field of environment, uh, the field of um, 
uh, social uh, impacts and also the economic impacts. Um, the, uh, the impacts of uh, environmental uh, changes can also uh, uh, being uh, understood in the context of the economic and social uh, context um, according to the changes over time. As well as uh, this enable them to uh, have a look on future trends and uh, projections to plan for sustainable development in future. In the field of uh, environment, we have always, um, in, uh, in a global scale, uh, a problem with uh, convincing the decision makers with the importance of uh, the environmental problems uh, and how big they are, uh, because uh, they have um, other uh, priorities like the economic and uh, social problems. So, uh, uh, academic and scientists, uh, academics and scientists uh, say that we have a problem in soil erosion with the land degradation, uh, with the climate change, with the waste disposal, and so on. Uh, but decision makers have uh, uh, other priorities. Uh, so, uh, remote sensing can enable uh, scientists to uh, interrelate the environmental, uh, economic, and social problems uh, together to inform uh, the decision makers that the environmental problems are also a priority and it's a main pillar in uh, the sustainable development. So, uh, in the uh, Central Department of uh, Climate Change in the Ministry of Environment in Egypt, we have produced um, an application uh, for uh, projecting uh, climate change impacts in the future till year uh, 2100. Uh, according to different scenarios, the uh, optimistic scenario of uh, 4.5 and also the pessimistic scenario of uh, 8.5. And this can help in planning for uh, the different aspects uh, in uh, the view of uh, climate change in future. Uh, when we come to MISPAR platform, it's always uh, arranging training courses and uh, bilateral meetings with the decision and policy makers in the ministries of uh, environment, agriculture, and uh, west, uh, water resources to uh, raise uh, their awareness about the application of MISBAR and uh, uh, remote sensing in making decisions and, and to um, build their capacities in using MISBAR to monitor the changes over time and to uh, produce uh, the enabling maps uh, like uh, the sensitivity maps uh, for land degradation uh, as well as uh, the vulnerability maps. Uh, tomorrow I will give a presentation about uh, the case studies and uh, the, the success stories uh, in Egypt uh, by using MISPAR uh, data uh, in different fields of uh, research. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Esra, for your contribution. Uh, I think we'll... Uh, Hand over to, hand over to, oh, yeah, Haja. I, 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 I'm really trying to, oh, it's, uh, Haja, okay, Haja, okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay, Haja, please proceed. So, first of all, thank you for those enlightening questions uh, that highlight the role of academia and private sector in uh, the field of earth observation and natural resource management. Um, as a representative of Krastalev, it is essential to recognize uh, the importance of collaboration between universities, private sectors, and government bodies 
to address their um, to address Africa's environmental challenges. So back to the question of how which role must the academic uh, sector play in exploration or observation to support the production of special indicators for monitoring and analyzing land degradation uh, in African countries and regions. Um, so we all know that universities uh, should be um, at the forefront of um, utilizing EO technologies uh, to develop reliable tools uh, by monitoring um, and analyzing land degradation. Um, actually, I mean by partnering uh, with governments, uh, international uh, organi organizations, uh, they can ensure that the data and analysis are tailored uh, to meet the specific needs of African countries, uh, thereby directly uh, contributing to uh, the formulation of sustainable land management uh, policies. One more thing, um, university uh, can act as a link, as a vital link between um, scientific research and practical field work, uh, fostering um, this um, innovation in land uh, management practices. Um, this is what we do actually in Krastalev, uh, the center with, with uh, its focus on space science and technologies application in sustainable development uh, plays um, a crucial role um, in the collaborative effort um, enhancing the impact of universities, centers, institutions, uh, led initiatives. Thank you. Thank you, Hedja. Uh, I think we'll give a quick, we'll summarize this in a short while, but before that, Mr. Adwil Rauf, kindly indulge in any of the, any questions okay. that you feel comfortable with. Fortunately, I don't have any questions before, but I will try to. <laughs> no, yes, uh, uh, the idea, just yeah, share yeah. your opinion okay. and we build on that, sir. Uh, uh, when you see uh, behind the scene of the academia and uh, or in another hand, other word, uh, see uh, uh, bird eye scene, um, I think uh, the EO is still it's it's uh, very sev uh, severely speaking. Uh, uh, the EO is still prisoner in the academia domain. Uh, I think. Uh, um, uh, there is a few uh, private uh, private sectors using this uh, technology, uh, um, and the academia is 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 very important in this uh, to to uh, shed the light on the the string points in this uh, technology to, uh, to 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 push the decision maker uh, makers and and users and so on, so uh, to, to use this uh, technology. Um, another, uh, you, uh, okay, uh, the, the relationship between the um, uh, universities and academia uh, institutions, I think it's, you have to, s to look uh, in this uh, uh, for, for the relationship between the academia and university from the uh, integration perspective. Um, and everyone com 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 complete another. Uh, I thank you for my, just, uh, my introduction. <laughs> thank you very much, sir. Uh, Abdul Rauf, you said uh, what I like uh, about you is, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I always see a good thing. I, 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 I like the idea that, you know, you can come to the party, you come late, and you still, make, you still make the party. That's the idea. The idea is when you go to the party, whether you're late, be the, be, be the party. Yeah? Uh, but, so thank you so much for your thoughts. I'll ask Mr. Elmi now to quickly give us his thoughts, and uh, as he does that, privileges wrap up what has come out of the panel, 
so that then eventually when we close, we will just have uh, two things to say and then we can uh, have a good picture and get have some coffee. Yeah, so Ms. Elmin, please, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Mr. Roberts. Uh, I know that I'm in front of, of experts and they will catch up each mistake that I will make or made. But I came with a veto for me and my friends. The veto is from Mr. Watara. I am quoting from Dr. Watara, let the youth do mistakes and learn from mistakes. So uh, each mistake that you heard from this panel, please take it as a grant. And uh, for the question that you made uh, for for those four questions, I will just uh, may make a comment in the fourth question. It's, uh, it's how can the academic sector thank them networking? I think they already start with the GMS and Africa Academy, Academia Network. And there is a, a lesson that we can learn from the aviation sector. In the aviation sector, they don't have this redundancy. They don't make things twice. They have standards. So, like for the training, for example, they have standard training packages. So, if you found a standard training packages, it's the same training that will be done. Be it in Mauritania or in the United States of America, you will find the same syllables. So, we can learn from that and make the, the same things. So I will go, go faster to uh, summarize just what has been said. Uh, academia, the private sector, and the decision maker are in different orbits. They should come together to collaborate. So decision maker needs tools to make decision. And these tools, this light can be given by the academia. So let's take, let's just not use the science for the sake of science. Let's use the science for more precise application and solution in business and different fields. That's it, I think. Thank you very much. A very big thank you to the panelists. I sincerely appreciate. A very big thank you to Professor Online. A very big thank you to the audience. Uh, I think uh, the main wrap up for this session is a call to action coming from uh, Professor Gaia. Uh, let's stop working in silos. Uh, let's have standards. Simple, simple things. So I, I think this is a call to action that indeed this is possible, it can happen. And it should happen actually. It, it is not about if it can, it should happen. So then once there is the partnership and we have the academia deeply involved, what I like again is uh, we have been enlightened that the traditional way of education is soon coming to an end. And, and half, three quarters of the world is blind to that. That gives academia must also refocus because the traditional way of doing things is gone. Tech has come in and we need to harness tech to then promote all these other things that make our lives much easier. Thank you very much. I was privileged to moderate this session. I will ask uh, the audience to give a round of applause to our very able panelists. And uh, I think at this point in time, I will probably want to, oh yes, okay, okay, it is, uh, yes, okay. Dear panelists, let's come to the front and uh, we'll remember this photo many years from today, particularly for the younger ones. And, uh, <laughs> but but I, I, I love what Elmin said. This is, you can only get better from here because in the next few years, you're the ones who are gonna be driving this. Let's come to the front and uh, let's have a family. It's called a family photo, okay. Oh, yeah.
Thank you very much, uh, gentlemen. At this point in time, I think I will hand over to Mr. Evans so that he will give us further guidance for the day. Thank you very much. And I must say again, I was very privileged to have uh, this panel. Uh, it was quite an interesting day. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Robert. Where is he? Uh, he went out. Ah. So thank you very much for this uh, great and nice uh, moderation. And actually, thank you to all the different uh, students, the Dr. Bashir, and all the guys. They were not prepared. We actually start, pre uh, you know, asking them this morning to, you know, prepare something and get ready. So thank you to them. It was, and also is uh, thanking uh, all the guys for speaking in English because uh, he hates French, this guy. But the next time we are going to, to make it in French, okay? <laughs> and in Arabic also. So thank to all of you, it's really, really appreciated. We are going to have a very last session, the restitution. It is just a two, three uh, slide presentation, slide presentation. So it will, done, it will be done by Amjet. He's busy talking. <laughs> Amjet, the presentation for the restitution, and then we will put an end to the, to the day. They are finalized it. I knew that this guy from Sfax, eh, since he was in front of the business, we, we, we are going to have this. Okay, so they have three seconds. Three seconds. Eh? No, three seconds. Three seconds. Uh, Africa, Africa. <laughs> 